Hmm? Topic: Electric charge. Huh? Hmm? How does a plastic hmm? comb attract paper? Uh, what? Hmm? You don't believe me? Hmm. Okay, let us try. <laughs> Take a plastic comb and bring it close to some pieces of paper. <laughs> hmm? Ah. Hmm? <laughs> hey, wait! Don't laugh. We need to do something first. Hmm. Rub the comb on your dry hair and then bring the oh. comb close to the pieces of paper. Huh? See? I was correct. Mm. The pieces of paper got attracted to the plastic ah. comb. Do you think it is magic? <laughs> no. Oh. The reason behind this is electric charge. Ah! Electric charge is the quantity of electricity held in an object. There are two mm? types of electric charges, positive and negative. However, there are some objects where the positive and negative charges are equal to one another. In such cases, we say that the object is electrically neutral. So, was the plastic comb initially electrically neutral or electrically charged? Initially, the plastic comb was electrically neutral. That means it had an equal number of positive and negative charges. Hence, it did not have the ability to exert a force and attract the pieces of paper. So, after rubbing the plastic comb on our dry hair, why was it able to attract the pieces of paper? I will tell you why. When we rubbed the plastic comb on our dry hair, it gained an electric charge. Once it got electrically charged, it got the ability to exert a force on the pieces of paper and attract them. This charge is called as static electricity. However, do you think, like a plastic comb, a metallic comb would also attract the pieces of paper? No, nope, you are wrong. A metallic comb will not attract the pieces of paper like the plastic comb. Wondering why is that so? It is because plastic is not a good conductor of electricity. It does not allow the electric charges to flow through it onto the earth. As a result, the charges build in the plastic comb, making it electrically charged and enabling it to attract the pieces of paper. However, metal is a good conductor of electricity. It does not let the charges build in it. It allows the electric charges to flow through it onto the earth, thus not allowing the metallic comb to get electrically charged. As a result, the metallic comb does not attract the pieces of paper. Oh. <laughs> Topic. Neutralization huh? reaction. How to treat a bee stick. Oh. Mm. Huh? <laughs> hey, oh. hold on. Don't go near that honeycomb. Please listen huh? to me. It is quite dangerous. <laughs> Fine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, huh? I told you. Hmm. Okay, now oh. don't worry. Put this baking soda solution on huh? the bee stung area. <laughs> you got some relief, right? Hmm. <laughs> Do you know why oh. you got relief? This happened because a neutralization reaction took place when we applied baking soda on the stung area. The venom of a honeybee contains formic acid. Oh. Huh? When it stings us, it injects that acid into our skin. Formic acid causes immense pain and irritation. However, when we apply baking soda solution, which is a huh? mild base on the stung area, it neutralizes the formic acid and cancels its effect. As a result, uh -huh. the sensation of pain and irritation Hooray! decreases and we get some relief. Such a reaction between an acid and a base is called neutralization. In neutralization, uh, oh. both acidic and basic solutions neutralize the effect of each other and the nature of both acids and bases gets destroyed. Huh? Oh. <laughs> hey, wait, what uh, are you doing? 
Don't tease that insect. It is not oh. a honeybee. Huh? It looks similar to a honeybee, but it is oh. a bit longer. It is called a huh? wasp. <laughs> At least this time, listen to me. Okay, don't listen and bear the consequences. Huh? 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 Applying the baking soda is not going to help. See, <gasps> nothing is happening. I will tell you what to do. Hmm. Pour this vinegar on the stung area. You will get some relief. <laughs> Why do you think the baking soda solution did not help in this case? Earlier, in case of the honeybee, we learned that its venom is acidic. Hence, baking soda, being a basic solution, oh. helped to neutralize the effect. <laughs> Huh? Ah! Now, in case of a wasp, the nature of its venom is basic. When it stings us, it injects the venom into our skin. Ah! The venom causes us pain and itching. Now, baking soda is also a basic solution. Hence, it will not provide mm. any sort of relief. However, huh? when we pour vinegar, which is a mild acid, on the stung area, the acid, that is, huh? vinegar and the base, <laughs> that is, the wasp's venom get yeah. neutralized. As a result, the sensation <laughs> of pain and itching Hooray! decreases and we feel better. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> Topic, nuclear fusion. Huh? Why is nuclear fusion not used huh? to generate electricity? You really want to know the answer to this, right? <laughs> but wait, before answering the question, hmm. let us understand what is meant by nuclear fusion. Huh? When two huh? lighter nuclei combine to no. form a heavy huh? nucleus, a large amount of energy huh? is released. Huh? This process is hmm? called nuclear fusion. Oh. Hmm? Where does this nuclear fusion take place? You think huh? that it takes place in a laboratory? <laughs> No, you are absolutely wrong. Huh? Nuclear fusion takes place in the sun. The nuclei of two hydrogen atoms join together to form a heavy nucleus of helium with the release of a large amount of energy. How do you think this energy reaches us? Ah. <laughs> nah, it does huh? not reach us through power oh. lines. Wait, I will mm. tell you. The energy huh? released after nuclear fusion reaches us in the form of sunlight, ultraviolet radiations, heat, etc. Oh. Huh? Hey, but we're already producing electricity oh. with the help of nuclear fission. <clears throat> So, huh? why do we require mm. nuclear fusion? For this, oh. you need to first understand the difference huh? between nuclear fusion oh. and nuclear fission. <laughs> As we already know, nuclear oh. fusion is the fusion of two lighter nuclei with the release of a huh? large amount of energy. The exact oh. opposite process happens in nuclear fission. Here, huh? a heavier nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei releasing a large amount of energy. Uh -huh. This process of fission is used in nuclear power plants, where a heavy nucleus of uranium is split into lighter nuclei. The energy that is released in this is used to generate electricity. Oh. However, there is a major disadvantage of huh? nuclear fission. Oh. Wondering what it is? Mm. The major disadvantage huh? is that uranium is a radioactive element. No. When uranium mm. undergoes oh. fission, it generates radioactive uh -huh. waste along with energy. This radioactive waste is very harmful for most life forms and the environment. Uh -huh. Hence, huh? we need to find oh. a clean and safe source of energy to hmm? generate electricity. Huh? What source oh. would that be? Hmm? Would it be nuclear fusion? Bingo, Hooray! you are right. Huh? Then huh? why are we not harnessing hmm? the energy of nuclear fusion to produce hmm. electricity? This huh? is because for nuclear fusion, oh. two conditions are required. Oh. 
They are high pressure and high temperature. Only when these conditions are met can the two nuclei travel at very high speeds resulting in collision. On Earth, it is extremely difficult to create such high pressure and temperature. Even if we are somehow able to create these conditions, the question is how will we control them? As there are many questions unanswered and unsolved, we have not yet succeeded in using nuclear fusion in the production of electricity. Topic Sound Why do we hear echoes? Oh. Hey, hold on. Don't go into that room. You don't want to listen to me. Okay, then go ahead. See, I warned you. Will you listen to me now? Don't worry. The sound you heard was just an echo of your voice. Let me explain what an echo is. When we speak or laugh in a big empty hall, we hear our own sound repeatedly. This is because our sound waves get reflected from the walls of the hall back to us. The reflected sound that we hear is called an echo. Hence, an echo is defined as the repetition of sound caused by the reflection of sound waves from a hard surface back to the listener. Huh? Oh. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? Are you trying to hear an echo? It is not that easy. Huh? There are two ideal conditions for an echo to be heard. When we speak or laugh, ah! we hear our original sound at that moment. <laughs> the sensation of this original sound remains in our brain till 0.1 seconds. Huh? This time is called the oh. persistence of hearing. When we utter sounds, some of our sound waves get reflected while some get absorbed. If the reflected oh. sound waves reach our ears before the completion of 0.1 uh -huh. seconds, then our huh? brain does not perceive the original and reflected sounds as separate sounds. They are huh? interpreted oh. as one sound. Therefore, in order to hear two distinct sounds or an echo, the time gap between the original sound and the reflected sound or echo should be at least 0.1 seconds. This is uh -huh. the first condition for an echo to be heard. Oh. Do you know huh? when the time gap will be more than 0.1 seconds? Mm. This gets us to the uh -huh. second condition for huh? an echo. The minimum distance between the speaker mm? and the reflecting uh -huh. surface should be at least 17.2 meters. Mm. <gasps> ah. When the distance is 17.2 meters <laughs> and we start speaking, Assume that the original sound reaches our ears at this time oh. and the reflected uh. sound reaches our ears at this time, then the time interval uh. between the reflected sound and the original sound will be equal to 0.1 seconds. As a result, we will be able to hear an echo. Huh? All right, now let us try and hear an echo in this room. It is even bigger than the previous room. Now, why can't we hear an echo? Uh -huh. This is because there are many soft furnishings like sofas, carpets, curtains, etc. Oh. in this room. Ah! Huh? They absorb most of the sound waves. Huh? As the sound waves oh. do not get reflected, we are not able to hear an echo in this room. Hence, one more thing to consider huh? if we want to hear an echo is that there should be minimal use of such sound absorbing materials. <laughs> Hooray! Topic Ear. How do ears help with balancing? They really do. You don't believe me. Okay, can you play guitar and walk at the same time? How do you think you were able oh. to maintain your balance? Hmm? 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 Ah! Huh? Hmm? <laughs> oh! Ah! Do you know why you can't balance oh. yourself anymore? Hmm? Wait, I will tell you. <laughs> 
This happens because there is a connection between our ears and body balance. <laughs> our ear consists huh? of three parts. Outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. Our huh? inner ear works in sync with our eyes and muscles, helping us maintain balance while we are doing various <laughs> activities. The inner ear consists of three semicircular canals huh? called superior semicircular canal, posterior semicircular canal, and a lateral semicircular canal. The three huh? semicircular canals are arranged in three different positions. Oh. Each of these canals has a fluid oh. called endolymph and hair cells huh? called cilia at the base. Whenever we move our head, the fluid moves, resulting in the movement of the cilia as well. Oh. When the cilia moves, it sends signals to the brain informing which direction our head has just moved in. Each canal has different functions as per the movement of our head. When we move our head up and down, the superior semicircular canal helps our brain to understand the yes motion. When we tilt our head towards our shoulders, the posterior semicircular canal helps our brain to understand the tilting motion. When we move our head from side to side, the lateral semicircular canal helps our brain to understand the no motion. Huh? It was too complicated, huh? right? Okay, don't worry about it. Relax. Why don't you go huh? on a merry-go-ride? <laughs> hey, why were you not able to maintain huh? your balance? Hmm? This is because when you sat in the merry-go-round and started rotating, the fluid in the semicircular canals also started to move. After a while, it was moving at the same rate at which you were moving. However, when the ride stopped and you got down from the ride, the fluid was still in motion due to inertia. Hence, even though you were not moving, the moving fluid gave your brain false information telling you that you are still in motion. Thus, you are not able to maintain your balance. Topic, huh? rancidity. <laughs> Why is a bag of chips half full? Uh -huh. Looks like you don't believe me. Hmm. Open the bag. Huh? See, hmm? I told you, the bag of chips is indeed half full. Hmm? Why is uh -huh. that so? It is mainly because of a concept called rancidity. Huh? <laughs> when food becomes rancid, it develops an unpleasant smell and taste and it becomes unsafe for consumption. Huh? Rancidity generally refers to a condition where the fats oh. and oils present in food huh? get oxidized, huh? resulting in food spoilage. Mm. Oh. Since the chips contain fats and oils, <laughs> they are likely to get rancid. Oh. Therefore, huh? to prevent this, nitrogen gas is oh. flushed into bags of chips by manufacturers. <laughs> But why uh -huh. nitrogen? Mm. Huh? Nitrogen yeah. does not react with fats and oils. Mm. As a result, rancidity does not oh. take place. <laughs> Moreover, a gas in the bag serves as a cushioning <laughs> agent and prevents the chips from crumbling. Huh? That is why the bag of huh? chips is only filled till half. <laughs> Topic, concave mirror. Why is your reflection upside down on a spoon? Hmm. Wow, ah. looks like you're getting ready to go for a party. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't huh? you stand here and then uh -huh. look into the spoon? <laughs> <laughs> don't huh? worry, your image appeared upside down because of the huh? inward curve of the spoon. The surface of huh? the spoon which is curved inwards uh -huh. acts like a concave mirror. Huh? You look confused. Uh -huh. Let me explain. A concave mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards. Being curved uh -huh. inwards, it reflects or bounces back the light rays in a different manner. Oh. When you see yourself in a spoon, which is like a concave mirror, the light rays from your face fall on the top of the spoon and get reflected oh. downwards. While the light rays from your feet fall on the bottom of the spoon and get reflected upwards. As a result, you see yourself upside down. Hmm. Now, the point where all these light rays meet <laughs> is called the focal point. When you stand beyond this point, only then will you be able to see an inverted image of yourself. However, if you stand before the focal point, the image will look upright. <laughs> Topic.
topic, eyes. <laughs> Why do we have two eyes instead of one? Oh. You don't know? Okay, to understand this better, close your right eye. Now, are you able to see the table kept on your right side? You were not able to see it, right? Okay, let me tell you why. Both our eyes work together and help us to see, judge, and perceive a view accurately. Having two eyes provides us with a wider field of view. When both our eyes are open, we get a horizontal field of view of about 180 degrees. However, with only one eye open, we get a horizontal field of view of only around 150 degrees. We are unable to view around 20 to 30 degrees. Hence, we are not able to see the table when our one eye was closed. Hey, did you know that our eyes see the same object from a slightly different angle? You don't believe me? Huh? <laughs> All right, look at this object. Both your eyes see the object like this. Now, when you see only with your left eye, the object will look like this. While, when you see only with your right eye, the object will look like this. Our eyes sent these two slightly different images to the brain. The brain blends or combines both the images to make a three-dimensional image of the object. Hey, but what is the use of a three-dimensional image? A three-dimensional image helps us to understand how far or how near an object is from us, facilitating better depth or distance perception. This means having two eyes enables us to judge the distance of the object or the depth at which the object is placed from us. Topics Osmosis Why is grass killed if salt is sprinkled on it? <laughs> hey, huh? what are you doing? Don't eat the grass. <laughs> Fine. As always, ignore me. <laughs> See, I warned you earlier. Hey, wait! You're making it worse. Don't do that. Look! You spoiled it totally. Mm. All right, don't cry. I will tell you why this happened. This happened because of a concept called osmosis. Oh. Osmosis is the diffusion or movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration of water through a semi-permeable membrane to a region of lower concentration of water. <laughs> Do you think osmosis huh? took place when we sprinkled salt on the grass? <laughs> Bingo. You are right. Huh? Normally, osmosis does not take place on a day-to-day -day basis because the grass tries to keep the concentration of water same inside and outside its cells through the process of transpiration. However, when we sprinkled salt on the grass, the concentration of salt outside the grass increased and the concentration of water decreased. As a result, the water present inside the plant started flowing outside due to osmosis. Since most of the water flowed out, the grass drooped down and eventually, oh. it died. Hmm? Hmm. Topic, buoyancy. <laughs> oh! hmm? Hmm? Oh! Can you drown in the Dead Sea? Your answer must be yes, right? You must be thinking that anyone who cannot swim will obviously drown, whether it is a swimming pool or the Dead Sea. However, that is not 100% true. Confused? Let me explain to you. When an object is partly or wholly immersed in a fluid, an upward force is exerted by the fluid on that object. This tendency of the fluid to exert an upward force on the object is called buoyancy, or upthrust. This upward force is called buoyant force. So, do you finally get it? Hmm, let me give you one more example. Place a piece of wood in water and push it downwards. What do you observe? It seems like something is pushing the piece of wood upwards, right? Water exerts an upward force on the wood. That is why the wood is getting pushed upwards. 
This force is called buoyant force, and the tendency of water to exert that buoyant force is called buoyancy. Dead Sea has a huge amount of salt dissolved in it as compared to any other sea or ocean. The presence of this salt increases density of water present in the Dead Sea. Higher density leads to greater buoyant force. As the Dead Sea has very high density, it exerts enough amount of buoyant force to make us float on it. So, if we can float on the Dead Sea, we are definitely not going to drown in it. <laughs>